small turbocharged petrol engines. The sort of engine you see in all sorts of cars apart from small hatchbacks. And that's quite ironic because if these small peppy engines belong to any car, it is a small hatchback. But you have seen one liter turbocharged engines in compact SUVs, compact sedans, mid-size sedans, but manufacturers somehow never really showed interest in putting those engines in small hatchbacks. Of course, we had the likes of Maruti Suzuki Baleno RS as well as the Tata Tiago JTP, but the fact of the matter is, none of those two cars are now available in the country. However, there is some good news finally, because turbo motors, the small 1-litre engines, are now making a comeback in small hatchbacks. It started with the Volkswagen Polo 1-litre TSI, which was launched with a manual version, and now we have this Grand i10 Neos with a turbo badge right here. Now, our job today is to find out if this 1-litre turbo engine is just a step up in terms of performance over the regular, naturally aspirated engine of the Grand i10 Neos, or does it have more zing on offer? Now, in terms of design, there isn't anything new apart from turbo badging on the grille as well as on the tailgate. Uh, now, that means this car, like many guys think that this is a hot hatchback, you know, Hyundai has done a lot of bit to this car, but unlike a European version where they offer this same variant with an N-line package, which has a sporty grille and sporty paint scheme, this doesn't get any of that. In fact, this is based on the sports variant of the car. So everything on the outside is pretty normal. I mean, there's nothing shouty about this car. It doesn't scream performance in any way, apart from the turbo badging. So still, that said, the sports variant is basically just one lower than the top end Asta variant. So you get all sort of bells and whistles. You have projector lamps, you have these diamond cut wheels. Uh, so equipment wise also, you get everything on this car. So that's pretty much on the outside. Now let's step inside and see if there is any change at all. Now even on the inside, not much has changed because this car is based on the sports variant of the regular Grand i10 Neos. So the equipment, the features, everything here is exactly the same. But uh, I prefer the all black theme of this car plus these uh, red inserts, they look really nice. On top of that you have the seat which is also black and then you have these nice uh, red stitching over here. The same theme is also there on the gear lever, you can see the leather here is, uh, again it's all leather but this red stitching is there. Same again with the steering wheel, this has red stitching, so overall it has a bit of that sporty flavour inside. Now because this car is based on the sports derivative, you of course don't get a push start stop button instead you have to make do with this key now coming back to the equipment of the car you have this 8 inch touch screen right here and then you have also got this wireless smartphone charging and this car is very decently equipped uh, now the quality and fit and finish is typical Hyundai so that means there is not much to complain it's really well packaged and it really feels a very nice place to be now of course these plastics right here they are kind of scratchy and they feel a little cheap but overall the cabin is really good quality. Even the instrumentation is exactly similar to the one we see in the sports variant of the car. So you have this part digital and part analog thing here. The tack is analog and the speedometer is digital. So overall not much has changed and this also means that this is a very practical cabin because the back seat space on this car is really phenomenal. It's not as cramped as the Polo, so you get that practicality here as well. Plus, there's a sporty 1.0-litre turbo petrol engine with a manual gearbox. Now, it's time to find out if this engine and gearbox lives up to the hype. Now, the Grand i10 Neos Turbo is powered by a 1.0-litre 3-cylinder turbocharged engine. Now, this is the same unit that we have already seen in the Venue as well as the Verna. But uh, the important thing to notice here is that this is a detuned version. So that means it delivers 99 bhp and 173 Nm of torque. Now for some people they might say, you know, it's, it's down on power and all that. But this is a much lighter car. And as a result, the performance, well, I think I find it better than the Venue as well as the Verna. Because this thing just absolutely flies. The in-gear acceleration, the power delivery, everything about this car is really amazing. Plus, what I really like about this motor is the fact that, you know, it revs quite freely for a turbo engine. And there is absolutely no turbo lag as well. Because the car is so light, under 2000 RPM, 
this car also just pulls i mean i just uh, drove it in the city and in second gear this car pulls from right down from 20 kilometers per hour in second gear just around 1200 rpm so that way this feels quite responsive plus this has a red line at 6500 rpm so between that zone 2000 rpm to 6500 rpm this is where the meat of the power band lies and in that space this car is simply unbeatable especially in the city this car absolutely flies and you know what when you're revving the nuts of this engine it also sounds kind of sporty <laughs> after 3000 rpm you hear this turbo whoosh and it is really an exciting part and i'm really surprised the way this engine behaves in this car i absolutely love driving it every single minute now another thing that really impressed me about this car is the refinement i mean the engine refinement is absolutely class leading when you're driving this car fast you can't hear anything of course when it's idling there are some vibrations uh, from the doors as well as in the gear lever but apart from that once you get going this cabin is absolutely silent even when you're doing high triple digit speeds <laughs> there is absolutely no complaint in that regard this has a very matured feel to the way it drives and feels like bigger Hyundai cars now coming to the gearbox this car gets a 5 speed manual now a couple of days ago i was reading it on social media people were complaining about this car you know having a 5 speed gearbox because most people think it should have gotten the 6 speed gearbox from the venue or the verna now the thing with this gearbox is that it has tall gear ratios because the engine has a wide power band so you don't find yourself changing gears that often plus the clutch is also quite light and the gearbox in itself it has short throws and it's quite smooth so overall it's a very effortless car to drive fast now coming to the sixth gear that most people are missing on paper well uh, to be honest even on the highway i was doing around uh, 120 kmph on the expressway and the engine was quietly sitting at around 2500 rpm so you don't really miss a sixth cog and another advantage of having tall gear ratios is that it reflects in the fuel economy of the car because this car i'm seeing that it's been returning me close to 14 kmpl per liter even with a heavy right foot so again this is something that's uh, reflected in the car's mid so i don't really trust it but i think uh, anywhere close to 12.5 to 13.5 you'll be able to extract that kind of fuel economy from this car quite easily now the other important question that needs to be answered is how this car rides and handles Uh, now we've already experienced uh, the ride and handling of this car in the regular version uh, when it was launched last year so even this car in terms of uh, the underpinnings it has the same chassis uh, the same suspension setup of course they've uh, tuned it up a little i mean i feel this is a little more firmer than the uh, regular version but i kind of like it because uh, this gives it that kind of feel that security around corners and uh, when you're cornering hard you can feel the nose stays put i mean it's flat around corners so you really kind of like that feel from this car the feedback that this car gives around corners i really loved it now one thing that needs to be changed is the tires because this car comes with the low rolling resistance tires and they are aimed at fuel efficiency and so around corners they run out of grip sooner than you would expect so that is the only thing that i would like to change in this car plus uh, they are the same size as the regular cars so with this kind of firepower this hot 1 liter turbo engine you need tires that grip well and uh, that is what i change if i have this car now in the past most of the people used to complain about Hyundai steering wheels they have no feedback and nothing uh, of course this being an electric steering there is not a lot of feedback but in terms of uh, directness i think this is there this does the job quite well and i think compared to other cars in the segment this feels uh, right up there we know a lot of you might be interested in knowing the crash test rating of the neo turbo however the india made version has not been tested by global and cap as yet so we can't comment on it objectively that's it the overall build quality of the car is solid and it comes with dual front airbags and abs and ebd as standard you know there aren't many cars on the market that appeal to your heart and head at the same time But the Grand Iten Neo Turbo, well, this is one of those truly special cars that strikes a perfect balance between being a fun machine and one that scores high on practicality as well. You've got a peppy turbo motor, 
you've got a practical and roomy cabin, you have all sorts of gizmos and gadgets that you'd ever want in a small hatchback and even the ride and handling dynamics are quite sorted. Sure, it's a little too expensive because this one commands a premium of nearly a lakh rupees over the standard naturally aspirated version. But it's all justified given the smile it puts on your face.